Today's video will be how to make in the hoop baby bibs. You need a 5x7 hoop, but you don't need anything bigger. The final bib is about 8 inches tall, and we're going to show you how that works. To get started, you need two pieces of fabric that are 8 by 6 inches, and that's approximate. It can be a little bit bigger, not too much smaller, you'll have a problem. Um, we use one color for the top and then plain white in the bottom, but you can use whatever you like. You're going to use your 5x7 hoop. We like to use mesh stabilizer because you can just leave it in. You don't have to worry about taking it out. And you hoop just the stabilizer. If you use the bibs designs that are applique, you will be cutting out a piece of the top where it goes around the neck. And this is big enough to use for the applique parts in the lower part of the bib. So you might want to save the little cutout pieces. That you, you will need three designs to make a bib. There's a top piece, there are designs in the bottom piece, which you will see, and then there is a design called Rick Rack. You can load all three of those to your machine. We'll use the top piece first. The very first part of this design is simply going to sew an outline for you. I recommend that you use white. I'm using blue here. Hopefully that will make the video a little easier to see. Just start and let your machine sew the first line. When that part is done, take the two pieces of fabric that you've chosen for the top, make sure they're right sides together, I'll just show you real quick, they're right sides together, line them up, don't have to be perfectly even, lay them on top, and just make sure that you've covered the lines all the way around. If you've cut it eight by six, you should be fine. Just start up your machine again and let this one sew out. This time it's going to leave the opening at the bottom. Now that's all you need for the top, so you want to take the hoop off of the machine and take this piece out of your hoop. You're going to take scissors and trim all around the outside and all of this part inside. You want to cut as close to the sewing line, but don't go over it. I cut around the outside of the bib and trimmed away the excess fabric. Now I'm going to turn it over so I can see this line, my bobbin thread, and I'm going to cut about quarter of an inch or so, or you can have it a little bit more along that line. doesn't have to be perfectly even. That's going to get caught up in additional sewing. You also want to go inside and cut around the inside. This is where that extra piece came from that we mentioned earlier. And these pieces are big enough to use for a lot of different applique projects, so you might want to save these. And then one more thing before you go to the ironing board, you want to clip your curves. This is cutting straight in towards the sewing line, but definitely not into the sewing. When you turn this right side out, what will happen is these, cur these clipped curves will make it a little f easier to get everything lined up and laying flat. If you don't clip the curves, it's going to be really, really hard to get this to turn. When you get to the very end, you want to cut off the corner so that you don't have any excess bulk going in this little slot. I also clip on the outside going around just so, again, it will lay flat. Even though this is trimmed pretty close, that will make a difference in how your project turns out. Okay, the top part is all done. We've taken it, turned it right side out, taken it to the ironing board and pressed it down. You can take this piece and set it aside for now. Next, you're going to take a second hooping of just stabilizer, put it on your machine, load the design of your choice, whichever one you want to make, 
and the first stitch that you're going to sew out again is going to be an outside outline just to let you know where your fabric has to go. Now for the bottom part, you want to take one piece of your bottom fabric, place it right side up, just make sure that you cover the whole outline all the way around. The next color will actually just tack this down for you. The next step in this design will be the Mylar graphic in the center. We're going to show you how to do the Mylar just in case you've never seen that before. Our designs always have an outline first to show you where to place the Mylar. And I use the same color that I'm going to use for the basic part of the design to start with. So in this case it's going to be white. I realize it's going to be a little hard for you to see this on the video. When that's finished sewing, you take a piece of mylar and just lay it over the top. Now you can put a piece of tape on it if you would like to hold it in place. If it gets a little bit wrinkled, that's okay. It isn't going to show and that isn't going to hurt anything. The next line of stitching will just simply tack down the mylar for you. The next color in the design is white, so I haven't had to change thread, so all I need to do now is just start it up and let it go, and we'll come back after we finish sewing all of the design on the front of the bib. Okay, our little bunny design is all finished in the middle. The next thing to sew out will be the words, but you want to remove the mylar. Just give it a little tear. It doesn't have to be completely removed here. The main part is get it out from the area where the, design, the lettering is going to sew out so that you don't have pieces of mylar caught behind the lettering. That's difficult to remove. <clears throat> We've changed the thread to the color we want. Now we'll do the lettering. We'll come back and trim the mylar from the rest of the design after we're finished. Okay. The com design is completely finished. We'll finish taking out the mylar and trimming and so forth after the bib is completely done. This is where the magic comes in. We're going to take the top piece that you finished a minute ago. We're going to lay it on top here and there's a couple of things to check for. This is the line where it's going to sew so you need to make sure both the top and the bottom are over that line. Okay. Second, make sure that it doesn't cover the outside line up at the top here or at the bottom. Okay. And what I do is I put a piece of tape. I'm using just regular scotch tape. You can use painter's tape, whichever you prefer, and lay it on here just to hold this in place because I don't want my fingers down here next to the, the needle. Okay. Now, when you start sewing, it's going to tack this part down. I usually just go ahead and peel this little piece of tape off out of the way right now. You can wait and do this later, but I'm going to just do it real quick. Now, the next thing you need is the other piece of the bottom. This time, this piece goes on face down, right side down. And again, just cover everything that's there. Now, this is not flat. You notice this has got stuff in the middle here. So you want to be sure that it's just with your finger. Put it down. Just all the way around. And start it up. An opening is going to be left here at the top, but the rest of it is going to be sewn into place. That's 
the end of this part, so you need to take your hoop off of the machine, take your project out of the hoop, and again, we're going to trim all the way around. Again, we need to also clip the curves so that this will lay flat once it's done, and I just do it all the way around here, about every half inch or so. And at the top, where this corner is, cut across the corner. That gets rid of excess in the corner so your corner will be kind of crisp. Okay. Now comes the fun part. All you need to do is turn this right side out. And if you pull your little top pieces, it'll help you turn it. And smooth the bottom. Just pull the top. And you have the front of your bib. Now there's one last thing that you need to do, and that is close the hole that shows in the back. You can do this by hand, and your bib will be finished if you prefer, but we've also given you a rickrack design, and you'll be able to sew it right across here, and that will close up the bib for you as well. Okay, the last step is to sew the rickrack on the bib. First thing you want to do is make sure that your bobbin thread matches the color of the thread you have on top, so the back and the front of your bib will look nice. Second, I use Badge Master, or a very thick uh, wash away kind of stabilizer. Just stabilizer in the hoop, and when you sew the first color, it's going to put a stitch on one side, just a stitch or two, and then move over a bit. It does this for the machines that try to center every single design, whether you want it centered or not. And if that pulls out, don't worry, you don't really need it. We just want the guideline to be sewn on the side of the hoop, and that part will do it. Okay, I press this so that I have a nice crisp line here, and the one thing you want to notice is you have a seam line. Just make sure that your fold is going to cover that seam, okay? Now you're going to lay this part bib on top of your line. You want the line to be as close to the edge up top here as you can get it, and you need to make sure that you're a stitch or two just inside that line. Now the way I do this is I lower my presser foot and I lower my needle. If it's inside by about an eighth of an inch, I'm right where I want to be. I just line this up and start sewing. I put a color stop here so that if you are way off, if, if your bib is way up here, then your rickrack's not going to sew in the right place. And what you can do is, because this is a, a tear away, you can tear this off and move it over and do what you need to do, or reload the design and use the function on your machine to reposition it. This is going to be in a pretty good place for what I want, so I'm going to go ahead and let the rickrack start to sew. it. The bib is completely finished. If you take the hoop off the machine and the project out of the hoop, turn it over, I just rip the filing away and the back is finished because you've got it completely sewn here and the front is finished. And that's all there is to a simple bib in the hoop. You can choose to use a snap or Velcro, whichever. We don't recommend tying because that could be a choking hazard.